everyone, and welcome to the first remote broadcast of In the Studio. Uh, quite an achievement of our technical staff. I'm Lynn Weaver, and in this episode, we're going to review some of the changes that community media in Davis had to make because of the COVID-19 shelter in place. And to tell us a lot more about these changes is I have here with me Alex, who is the Programming and Training Manager at Davis Media Access. Thank you so much, Alex, for being here. Tell us. Thank you for having me, Lynn. Very nice to see you remotely. We generally see each other face to face. But this is great, and I see that you are giving the good example, wearing your mask. Um, yeah. So, what were the changes that you had to make really quickly to adjust to the pandemic uh, and the shelter in place? Can you tell us about it? It was quite a feat, actually. Sure. Uh, well, there were a couple things. So. Um, obviously, before the pandemic uh, started and the shelter in place orders came down, we used to have a lot of volunteers that would come down to the station to make media. They would make television shows, they would edit their videos using our edit suites. We had an entire slate of DJs that came in that would do their uh, radio shows on our low power FM radio station, uh, KDRT 95.7, um, which serves the community of Davis here in California. And uh, we were also gearing up for our summer workshops uh, in which uh, the kids come in and they learn hands-on how to use the equipment to uh, make television and learn all about the process of what it means to make media and, and edit. Um, further, it was also getting ready you know, for a huge event uh, for the Big Day of Giving with uh, dozens of other nonprofits, which was a big in-person event. Um, so all of a sudden, uh, we had to close the building essentially and figure out how are we going to do all these things and get word out, you know, about the various uh, community announcements. So uh, the Yellow County's, uh, you know, the restrictions and shelter in place, we need to get that information out because um, we have a radio station and we, uh, and we manage two television channels. Uh, here. So we were a source of information in addition to, the, of course, the internet. So the, the, I think, like everyone, we struggled to get our hands on masks, uh, you know, sanitation things, wipes, um, all kinds of things that were going to be needed to allow anyone into the building at all. Um, and then on top of that, um, even though a lot of research had been done and we were, we were actually in the process of remodeling our facilities to accommodate more uh, remote productions and things like that, uh, that, that process had, was still in the planning stages. So we had to push everything forward from uh, acquiring iPads that people could check out um, with things on them uh, and remotely managing them and laptops and decide what to do about the, the, the children's workshops during the summer, which unfortunately we had to cancel because there's, there's just no way to have kids together hands on, uh, you know, and not be transferring germs around and, and things like that. Yes. So huge it, it was quite a challenge. It, it's a huge adjustment. Huge. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, you know, a lot of technology exists out there for the streaming and the meetings and the zoom and everybody had to get used to like, okay, now everyone's on camera. And the webcams are not really great quality. We're used to using HD studio equipment here, um, uh, but nobody has that at home. People's home internet connections aren't that great. So even in, uh, w what we really started with was getting the radio people back on the air because music, you know, people have their collections of music at home and they can learn to put together a radio show from home. Uh, but it's still for people to come in and, spin vinyl or put a CD in and hit a button and talk on a microphone. That's uh, one kind of knowledge they need. But then to suddenly have to learn how to edit things digitally when maybe they, you know, that's not part of their skill set. Yeah. Um, that's very difficult. So we had a lot of sort of Zoom online technical sessions to advise people like this is how you can put together your show 
as a sort of a pre-recorded thing and then submit it online and then we get it into our system and our automation system plays it back. Um, so, and then gradually we've been reintroducing uh, DJs to come in and we, we had to redo the entire programming schedule to accommodate spacing between everyone so that no one was overlapping, that there was time to sanitize and clean everything in between everyone. And we've been doing that in phases. And now we have uh, DJs back on the air broadcasting live. And, and this is wonderful. something that you think, uh, oh, well, people can listen, but th there's a connection that people have with the radio and hearing other people's voices live and not just pre-recorded material. And now on the yeah. t television side, we're facing that same challenge, but it's even greater uh, because video is more complicated than uh, radio. And, and yes. you know, people have to edit their productions. They have to learn how to shoot their productions. Yes. And while they were doing that with video cameras, now it's with phones. So um, Yes, it's, uh, and a lot of people don't feel comfortable with all this new technology. And yeah. one program uh, also that uh, is a great service to the community is the uh, lending uh, free of charge of all your equipment and uh, equipment. Uh, yeah. and that was something yeah, that was pretty difficult people. too because there are a lot of how people that rely on us so, how so uh, we did check out video equipment it? recording equipment and uh, at first it was like well we can just wipe everything down and it'll come in and out but that's just way too complicated. These are not like just flat surfaces that you wipe down. I mean, a video camera has got zillions of little buttons and all these other things. And, um, and just the fact that you'd have to like, what, take the equipment out to the curb to check it in and out. So uh, right now we're yeah. not checking any equipment in and out uh, other than things like uh, iPads and flat things that are very easy to uh, sanitize in between. Um, yes. But we're working towards, uh, offering more equipment for checkout and uh, services that will allow people to uh, edit and so forth using various online platforms. So we've ex expanded the number of online services we use. Uh, before, of yes. course, we had everything here, but we don't have the infrastructure, of course, to support uh, you know lots of uh, online uh, YouTube streaming and stuff. So we have a YouTube right. channel. Um, that we put our programming on, but getting things onto the, the cable channel. So people are now submitting files digitally. I do have yes. uh, television shows that are being produced every month that are, people are sending me through, uh, you know, Dropbox, Google Drive, all these different methods. People are mailing yes. uh, USB drives into me and, and we get yes. that, that programming out. And then, of course, it's there was the whole learning curve about online meetings. How do you record these? Uh, sessions and presentations and and get them and turn it around quickly enough to get it on the channel while it's still relevant because yes. of course yes. uh, well, our community has a lot of announcements you know yes well it's um, uh, it, it makes my head spin really uh, uh, about what all the things that you've been doing but I wanted to ask you Alex about uh, the uh, remodeling and the expansion that you mentioned just a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. is that still going on uh, or will, so, will, are you thinking of it again? Because yeah. it sounds, it sounds wonderful what you, mm -hmm. your uh, the community media is planning to, to become really. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we were in the process of was this remodel uh, to rearrange the building. We we do own the building that we're in uh, um, here on Fifth Street in Davis. And as part of sort of the long term planning, uh, we needed to reorganize the interior to make a more efficient use of the space, move the uh, radio booth over because we have a lot of bands that come in to perform live. And, uh, and we wanted to expand the ability to handle that. Right now, the radio booth is very small. Um, so you can mm -hmm. imagine if you have 12 cellos, you can't fit them all into the, the radio booth. Um, but of course, with any construction project, it takes a long time. There's the design, uh, there's permitting, uh, there's uh, getting bids from contractors. And so that process is actually still slowly been moving forward. And, it, and it's, it's still on track. Because we were at the well, stage I'm very where happy to hear that. Yes. the what plans were funding? being finalized. 
What about um, funding, Alex? Well, the, 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 the biggest challenge we face is really sort of more of a larger structural issue in that people are no longer subscribing to cable television and fees from those subscriptions are make up a big part of the budget for all the community media centers around the country. That is so interesting. Uh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah, they have to pay for the public uh, rights of way to run their cables because it's cable television. So they're actually fiber optic cables these days. It used to be copper, but now it's fiber optic. And so they pay into a state fund uh, to use those rights away. And, uh, and we receive part of that money through the city of Davis and various contracts. And of course, we also fundraise. And as I said, uh, in the early stages of COVID, everyone was very generous, uh, surprisingly so, uh, around the country. I think the big day of giving, even though the in-person events got canceled, I think they set some records for the online giving. But now as we see this dragging on longer and longer, um, people have other things that they need to take care of, like feeding their families, and a lot of people are out of work. And so uh, there are some, like our fundraising is, you know, there's a shortfall and we're going to have to figure out how we cope with something like that. So yes. we're not in any kind of uh, dire, dire straits of closing. You know, we're, we're moving forward and trying to offer as many services as we can. Um, Alex, I wanted to tell you, can you, uh, I wanted to get a little bit of a human a human angle from you. So can you describe uh, what you do? Uh, I mean, apart from uh, telling me, uh, knowing, you know, so much about uh, uh, Davis Media, what do you do generally? And what do you enjoy doing the most? Well, <laughs> if at all. <laughs> there, there's a couple things. Is One, uh, there's always new things to work on here. So it, yeah. everything is a, a very much project based. So volunteers come in all the time asking for help. And sometimes that help is with, I want to create a TV show. I want to create a talk show. But sometimes it's like, I want to make a short movie. I want to make a short film. And so there's always a lot of creative variety that people ask me to participate in. You know, what's your advice on this and that? And I, I really enjoy that aspect of the work. I love uh, even though I'm not really involved on the radio side of things, I love the DJs that come in and every one of them has a passion about a certain kind of genre of music um, that they're sharing with the community and with the world, in fact, because we stream online. And many of our DJs have shows that are listened to all around the world because they're unique. Um, uh, we have Hawaiian music, jug band music, uh, all kinds of stuff uh, here that I probably would never have uh, gotten a chance to really listen to or paid attention to if I hadn't met the people that are behind them. Um, right. So the human interaction is really important. And then, of course, the other yeah. thing that I enjoy is teaching the kids, uh, because uh, having grown up at a time where uh, people just always think of the top jobs like director, writer, producer, or do be a lawyer, make money or be a banker. And people are not necessarily encouraged to do creative things. You know, they always say, oh, the starving artist. But there's so many opportunities and different career paths out there that um, kids and teens can aspire to and make a living at. And I really think sometimes that so society discourages, you know, kids way too much um, and they should be encouraging these creative endeavors because that's what enriches everybody's life. So it's yes. great to work with kids and show them that, hey, you can do this, even though it's technical or, you know, or somebody's telling you you can't. No, you can actually learn how to do this and that you don't have to necessarily be the director or the producer or, you know, there's a few top jobs, but yes. there, there's it's like a pyramid, you know, an iceberg. And, there's so much underneath it Alex, that you can contribute. And Alex, uh, when, while I was listening to you, I thought about the interns that you have, um, that yeah. uh, you uh, tutor, and generally uh, high school students or very young people who want to learn yeah. about uh, uh, televisions and uh TV editing and audio editing. Tell us about some of these interns. I mean, there's a whole spectrum of people. <laughs> Whenever I well, host we have show. summer workshops. Uh, summer workshops for little kids is what uh, you know. That was uh, a lot, and the reason behind that was that um, 
they don't really have any other opportunities, uh, the younger kids to get involved with media in that way, television and stuff. And then we have the yeah. high school internships. And that's really important because, uh, you know, by the time they're in high school, they're thinking, where am I going to go to college? What am I going to do for a living? Um, yeah. How can I express myself personally and be different from everyone else? Of course, teen identity is, you know, a huge component of growing up. So yeah. we have uh, the opportunity where kids can be on camera or behind camera. They can learn to edit. And what happens is that they participate in covering a lot of the high school productions and community productions around town. And they work with my coworker, Jeff, who's the uh, production manager. And they go out into the community and they learn how to cover these events. And some of them have to learn new skills because they have to learn how to talk to people and how to overcome some of their shyness, maybe about appearing on camera. They have to learn how to interview people. And then, of course, you know, there's all the technical skills that go with it. And yeah. the really gratifying thing is that a lot of them decide, hey, I really like this. And then they choose a college where they can further expand their skills. And as I always point yeah. out, you know, you can take media skills to other fields and industries. Yes. Uh, communication, the ability um, to communicate is valued by everyone. So. Yeah, Alex, um, we're just about out of time. We have just a few minutes. And uh, what I wanted to ask you is perhaps a question that you cannot answer, but uh, uh, maybe you can. Uh, namely, what are the lessons uh, that you have learned for the future uh, from having to adjust and from having to experience uh, COVID-19 in terms of communications? Obviously, remote communication, Zoom, uh, programming and uh, other things, but personally, uh, what, what have you learned, let's say, on how, because it's true that our future is uh, going to be different. Well, as someone who's followed technology all along from the beginning, I've always uh, been interested in it. Um, I find that the consolidation that occurred in the has occurred in the media industry. You know, we used to have thousands of independent radio stations and dozens of, uh, if not hundreds, uh, of independent television stations. And maybe they were affiliated with a network, but they were independent. And it, it's really dwindled. And everyone assumes that, oh, well, you get your information online. But as we've seen, uh, there's not a lot of editorial going on. And so there's just tons of bad information. And it's really uh, easy for even adults, not to mention kids who don't know how to discriminate between uh, what's fake news or real news. Um, and that has, a, I think, a major effect on society is where do you get good, reliable, uh, true information? And, and that goes right down to the community level. So where can people in their town, um, if the newspapers are closing up and everything's closing, where can they find out things that are relevant to their lives in their town? And to place the burden on the consumer, I, I call, I'd say call them the consumer, that they have to yes. go out and filter through all that themselves and take the time for that. Uh, who's got the time? Um, yeah. That was the function that editorial served in all these, uh, you know, uh, uh, larger organizations in the past, media yes. organizations. I wanted to say for Very profit, because nonprofit as well. Um, yes, very interesting so observations, Alex. Very, very mm -hmm. interesting observations. And uh, Alex, I'm sorry, but uh, we really are out of time. So thank you very much for coming uh, and explaining all of this to us. And uh, thank you Hi. to all of you for watching. Um, from all of us here at Community Media, thank you. And see you next time.